Audio quality is one of the most important things when you're creating video content. And in this video, we're gonna compare three of the most common microphone setups that are seen in YouTube videos and talking head setups. The lavalier mic, the shotgun microphone, and the dynamic microphone, a Shure SM7B in this case. It seems like today, people care less and less if a microphone is visible in a shot. It used to be you would have to hide a lavalier mic or you'd wanna boom a shotgun microphone out of frame to get the best audio possible of your talent. But now with a lot of internet videos, we're seeing people just using a Shure SM7B or a dynamic microphone right in the frame of their shot or people wear microphones and they have the cables visible because it's just obvious that you're using a microphone in this day and age. So in this video, we're gonna compare three different microphones that I've used for a lot of my YouTube videos. We've got the Sennheiser AVX with the ME2 lavalier, which is a wireless system. Then here we've got the Shure SM7B, which is a dynamic broadcast style microphone that's designed to be right up next to your subject. And then we're using a shotgun microphone, the Audio-Technica 875R, which is on my camera that's about two or three feet away from me. Now normally you would have the microphone boomed as close to the talent as possible, but in this case, I just wanna show how a lot of people are using the microphone on the camera, just a little bit farther away from the subject. First, let's talk about the advantages of using a wireless lavalier system. So the main advantage is that you're disconnected from your camera. You can be wherever you wanna be without having to worry about an XLR cable that can reach close enough to you, or you don't have to worry about having a big microphone in the frame, or you don't have to worry about booming a mic to get it as close to you as possible. It's just super easy to clip the microphone on. You can tuck it into your shirt. You can also tape the microphone to you if you don't wanna use the clip. So there's a lot of versatility with these and they're super easy to use. The biggest con of the lavalier microphone is since the capsule is the smallest, a lot of times you'll find that most lavalier microphones just don't sound quite as good as a full-size microphone. They can be lacking in the oomph that a full-size microphone like a shotgun microphone or a dynamic microphone can provide. So you get the worst audio quality from a lavalier microphone but in some cases it's still the better choice if it's up close to your subject. Like here, I have it just below my chest, which is a pretty good placement for it. The biggest con to using a wireless microphone is you have to worry about battery life and wireless interference, which the issue with these is if your microphone shuts off, then you have no way of knowing while you're shooting if you're not monitoring or watching your audio meters. And the same thing with interference. Sometimes interference doesn't even show up on the audio meters. So if you're not wearing headphones and listening to the audio back as you're recording, you could be getting wireless interference the whole time and then later you go to listen to your video file and you just hear it's unusable because your audio is bad. So lavaliers are great and easy to use, but they also have a couple of drawbacks due to sound quality and reliability and worrying about battery life. Next, let's talk about shotgun microphones. The best shotgun microphones use phantom power or they have a battery built in. Now, in my case, I'm using the Sony XLR handle that has phantom power and it powers the Audio-Technica AT875R. So this is really nice because I don't have to worry about an internal battery in the microphone. As long as the camera's on, I know that it's providing phantom power for the microphone and I'm gonna get good audio. One thing to note about shotgun microphones is they're not a sniper rifle or like a zoom lens, you still wanna get the microphone as close to your talent as possible. Ideally, it's tucked just out of the frame of the shot and you're booming it over them and weighing down a C-stand or a microphone stand to get it just out of the frame. So there is a little bit more setup that's involved. A lot of people just use shotgun microphones on top of their camera, and in this video, that's exactly what we're doing. I'm about two or three feet away from my camera, and we've got the shotgun microphone on it. Now, just for comparison, I'm about one foot away from the shotgun microphone, just so that you can hear the difference and how it sounds when it's just barely out of the frame of your video. So shotgun microphones are great, especially if you get them really close to the subject. They are a little bit more inconvenient than using a lavalier microphone though, because you need to carry around an extra stand or else you need to shoot with the wide lens and get the camera as close to the talent as possible. Last, we're gonna talk about the Shure SM7B, which is a dynamic broadcast style microphone. Now the Shure SM7B is known for eating gain for breakfast, so you need to have a really strong preamp or some sort of booster in your signal chain to get enough signal out of it. You'll also wanna be as close as possible to this microphone. In this case, I'm about six inches from the microphone, but if you get even closer to the microphone, you get that super deep radio voice that everyone really wants to get out of the SM7B. So the biggest issue with the dynamic microphone 
is you want to be as close to the microphone as possible to get the best sound, which sometimes isn't the desired look on camera. Now, in some cases, it does seem like this is beginning to become the cool thing to do, especially on a lot of podcasts and YouTube videos where you use a big dynamic broadcast microphone and it's visible in the shot. But another thing to note about it is unlike a shotgun microphone, you do really need to be as close as possible to the microphone to get the full width of the sound. Also, they don't use phantom power, so that makes their output a lot weaker, unlike the shotgun microphone. Additionally, there's no way you're going to be able to mount a dynamic microphone on your camera or clip it on like a lav mic, so it's going to take the most hardware to use no matter what. Whereas with the shotgun microphone, at least you can mount it on your camera if you really want to, but with the dynamic microphone, you're going to need a tabletop stand or a boom arm of some sort to get it right where you need it. So to me, when comparing all three sounds of these microphones, the dynamic microphone sounds the best followed by the shotgun microphone and then followed by the lav mic and of course you can apply eq and compression and effects and post to get a better sound and to adjust the sound to your needs but i really favor the approach of getting the best possible microphone that fits your voice your style of presentation and then having to do as little post-production work as possible because that's what's going to give you the best sounding audio when it's the microphone and your voice is natural sound. So when you're picking a microphone out to use for your project, make sure you take note of all the different pros and cons to each of them. The lavalier is the smallest, the easiest to hide, and you can be however far away you want from your camera. The shotgun microphone is going to give you the most versatility without having to have a stand on your desk. But if you boom it, you're going to get a lot better sound quality out of the shotgun microphone. Additionally, you have to worry about phantom power or battery power on a microphone where you're not using an XLR cable. And lastly, you have the dynamic microphone, which is the biggest, the bulkiest, probably sounds the best, but you also need to have a lot of gain on tap on your preamp or your audio recorder to be able to use it. So each of these microphones has benefits and drawbacks. I hope this video helped you to learn about the different ways that you can use these microphones to get the best possible sound. If you're interested in buying any of the microphones we talked about in this video, I have links for all of these and all the other gear I use in the description below. Also, if you have any questions about these microphones or different microphone types, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer them. And give this video a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any upcoming content.